So what, are your, what is your official job title? Which one? Well, whatever, we, whatever we're going to talk about today. Well, well, we'll talk about saving a legacy. Yeah. Um, I work for Carfax. Okay. So, but that has a bit of a background into how we got into saving a legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's saving a legacy. Your your company. Saving a legacy is my company. Okay. I started with Enterprise Car Sales. Yeah, I remember that. Right. Yeah. I did six years with them. Majority of my time was in finance. Mm-hmm. So that's where saving a legacy was birthed from because. I dealt with so many uneducated consumers. For sure. And, and, you know, you being in your business as well, you see it. It really came from one particular customer who decided they had $5,000 down and they had three credit cards with $200 each maxed out on all of the credit cards. Oh, really? And I'm just like, pay it off. Yeah. Pay off the credit card, dude. Yeah. And... He was like, no, I'm just going to put $5,000 down on this $17,000 card. I'm like, okay, well, here's your 11% interest rate compared yeah. to your 2.9. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in that particular moment, I had a choice to, like, tell him, I'm not going to sell you a car because of your ignorance. Yeah. And you've got an opportunity to save anywhere between 8 to 10% in interest just by using – Six hundred dollars of that forty-five, you're mm-hmm. going to save a ton in interest. Go out, and chances are, if, if I if I tell you the truth, you're going to go buy a car right down the street. Yeah. So I made a choice. I'm going to sell you the car. Yeah. But I'm also going to use that as some motivation to yeah. educate people. Yeah. And to be frank, it's frustrating within the black and brown community. For sure. So. That's really where saving a legacy was birthed from. I said, I've got to educate my people on credit. Yeah. It's a stereotype. Yeah. Stereotypes are stereotypes because there's a sense of truth to it. Mm -hmm. We like chicken. (laughs) You can't say that because if you say that, you're racist, right? For sure, yeah. But you could say it. Guess what I ate yesterday for Thanksgiving? <laughs> chicken. Some chicken. Right? Because I would have had that over turkey. I hate turkey, see, so I would have been pumped. There, for there's a sense of truth with every stereotype. Sure. And I want to eliminate the stereotype of black people with bad credit. Mm-hmm. So I felt with all of the knowledge that I have now being in the finance office, understand that the location that I was at was the largest enterprise car sales location nationwide. Number one in sales, number one in Mm -hmm. volume, number one in profit. I mean, and I was the number one finance manager. I rolled 70% of the deals out of a large volume used car dealership. So I would see, on average, three to 400 credit reports in two weeks. I'd have what we call dead deals literally boxes and people that just couldn't qualify just who would not qualify so you take all of that experience talking with the banks finding out what they're looking for what they're not looking for what this consumer needs to do you figure it out yeah i have not ran into one question to this day since i've established saving a legacy in regards to credit that i don't know Mm -hmm. that's just how much experience for sure you gain when you look at that every day Every day. That's the thing that like I get frustrated. I think we look kind of like we're in the same world. Like that statement you made. We've already started the podcast. I'll do the intro later. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, that that statement you said about like I'm gonna tell you the truth, and then you can go. You're gonna you're gonna go down the street, and then you're gonna be like, "Well, I want that car," because sadly the consumer is in that situation for a reason. Right. So he's gonna go to some other guy, and the other guy like just do the deal. Like I tell people all the time, like. I have cl- five times last week I've told people not to sell their house. Five times because I don't think it's smart for this person right. to sell it. Even though I'm gonna make, I'm gonna sell it in one day, make minimum ten G's, mm-hmm. right? Because they're pretty decent sized deals. And I just lost out on fifty thousand dollars because I have. I want to be. I want to educate you on making the right decision, not to sell you on right. my service, right? And I go, and you're gonna go down. If you call another real estate agent, they're gonna say. Oh, we could do this and this and this and this and this. And I'm like, because they don't make money unless they do the deal. Right. So they don't want you to, they don't have, they, they can't be honest. And they don't have the experience to even know, because they do four deals a year and I do 50. They don't even know that they're telling you bad information. Right. 
because they're ignorant. Right. They're also ignorant. They're also ignorant. Yeah. They're they're on the same level as you are. Yeah. Right. And 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 part of that goes into I think because of our job careers are so similar, it really goes into integrity. So oh, you have to be. You've got to be integral in everything that you do, mm-hmm. or you just won't sleep at night. No. Unless you're just that bad just of a person. Care, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> why yeah. I, so I get so afraid when people question me. I'm like, my job is to get you the most money. I'm here to give my sellers the most money and best deal. Right. That is my only job. Like, So when you question me, it's like you're almost questioning my integrity or my, if you think I'm dumb. You're not. And then you should have hired the wrong, you hired right. the wrong guy, right? I have one right now. I'm like, oh, dude, every time he texts me, I'm like, my job is to get you the most money. If Period. I don't get you the most money, then I didn't do my job correctly, and I'm not going to get business from you down the road. Right. Duh. Right. Yeah. You know? My uh, my my dad, he's a he's a car broker mm-hmm. and um, LJ Auto Consultants. And name drop. Uh, right. Name drop. I have to plug my pop, <laughs> man. <laughs> and um, you know, some of the uh, dealers they absolutely despise him. Yeah. Because my dad could easily make an extra five thousand dollars. Oh, I tell people all the time I can make more money. But he's like, I don't if, want to. If I, if I do this customer wrong, mm-hmm. comes back to you. How? I'm not going to get that referral. Mm-hmm. And if I don't get that referral, then my business stops. Yep. Thirty years. Mm-hmm. No website. One hundred percent customer referral. Fair. And that's the thing. You have two types of business. I think people need to realize you go into you go into relationship business, mm-hmm. or you go into heavy marketing and you turn and burn deals. Yep, those are your two options to be successful in business. And then if you think about that heavy marketing turn and burn, your closing percentage drops significantly. 100 percent. Significantly. I'm the worst follow up person ever because I, <laughs> because it's like because I hate bugging people. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to walk into the room and be like, oh great, Adam's gonna talk to me about selling my house, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you come to me, right? And then if I call you and you don't call me back, you ain't interested right. anymore, right? And then call me when you when, when you're, you're ready. ready. Just call me when you're ready. You know exactly, man. It's it, the same philosophy. Oh, right? for sure. You know. Uh, and the funny thing, it's like, oh, we're successful. Right. I wonder how that works, right? <laughs> <laughs> Care less about doing the deal and about the person, and you'll make more and money. you'll make more money. Exactly. And its problem is that most people don't put the time and effort in to get to that point where they can do that. Right. Because they're they're starving. It's exactly. Like they're star- I remember a statement, Grant Cardone, I've made, I used to follow Grant a lot, and I still do, and Gary and all those guys. And Grant would always say, he's like, poor people are the most selfish people in the world. And he's like, and remember, was like, what? He's like, because you're only worried about yourself. You can't do good for anyone else because you're still just trying to live for you. You're like, okay, how do I get that next just few dollars? Bring that in, few dollars to survive. When you become super successful, that you can actually like, okay, I can go. I can tell that person the right move because I don't need that money now. I can wait for that money later. Right. Because they're going to come to you. They're, right. They're going to come to you, yeah. you know. And that's that's the thing with, with integrity selling, man. It's... It's if if you do the right thing, people will know. Mm-hmm. They they've got that that sixth sense to mm-hmm. to know. Okay, they really care. Yeah, know? and and part of saving a legacy is really it's kind of built on itself because at first it was just credit education, and a lot of people that didn't like me were my own family members. Of course, because my family members, you know, second third cousins are on Facebook talking about. Hit me up, yeah. three hundred dollars, yeah. and I'll fix your credit. Yeah, and I'm like, oh god, here we go. Yeah, let me let me let me tell the truth. Mm-hmm. All right, um, you why know. do people hate me, dude? Yeah, I'm the only realtor who sell, tells people buying a house is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got a drop. We got a one. We did a podcast the other night. Young kid, he's like, I got fifty G's in the bank. My parents say I should buy a house. I said, if you buy a house, it won't be with me because you'll be an idiot. And he's like, what? And I'm like, you're starting your own company, bro. You need that cash to build your company to make right. more money. Get that cash. Get the money. house later. Yeah. I go live in an apartment with a buddy. Split that cost. That fourteen hundred bucks a month. Split that crap in half. Go cheap as can be. Don't be getting no nice cars. No fresh. No fresh clothes. Right. Go poor. You go poor for next three years and stack and that money, use that control. money to go hire someone, you're going to ball out. Be patient. Be patient. I was like, be patient, and I'll be the only realtor to tell you not to buy a house. And see, and that's, that's uh, uh, the concept of delayed gratification. Mm-hmm. It, I, I can go into a whole other so story. Hate, that's why I hate Instagram. Yeah. I hate social media. Much I live on that, I hate it more than life itself. People try to live up to an expectation. Well, and, and it's just like, what are you selling on there? You know what I right. mean? It's like, we know, we, me and you both know what we could get likes. 
we could easily know it would oh, get yeah. more likes and views and blah blah blah. And, but it's like why? That doesn't that doesn't create towards the brand. The right. brand is more important than anything else. So when people go, oh, social media don't work. It's like, well, yeah, because you're shaking your butt in the camera all the time, yeah. and then you're, and then one post later, you're trying to sell, sell someone, a business, a, sell yeah. a business, like, oh, you know, <laughs> unless your right. business is your booty, right? This, right? You're doing if well. If your if your business is booty, you're crushing, right? But if you try to sell anything after you're showing booty, you out, yeah, it ain't gonna yeah. work. I mean, I think I think social media definitely has its platform. Oh, I it's think, great. You know, with um, even with my business, oh, saving for the sure. legacy, it's. I'm upset at you, actually. It's, it's been I've been wanting phenomenal. to do this for a while. I know, I know, dude. Right now is the perfect time. I know, for sure. Pandemic, nothing yeah. to do, you know. I, I Literally, I'm like, because I think, because I see the same thing you see. Right. Right? People are like, I, I'm like, dude, your credit's 550. Like, you can't, like, especially the pandemic, most people don't know, but when when loans, loans banks tightened up all their, right. raised all their credit. So if you were sitting before the pandemic at 580, you could do an FHA loan. Right after that, the banks rolled them up to six. You can't buy a house now. That quick. That quick. One day. And do you know what to do to get that 550 and up he, to a six? And here's the thing. Your parents probably don't know. Yep. Your friends don't know. Right? And then you start trying to Google stuff. And then you're paying stuff off. I tell people, like, don't buy, pay off a credit card unless you go talk to someone who tells you what you need to be paying off. And see, and even, so. Because like, I don't even know. That's the perfect example, right? Paying off a credit card. That's something that people need to understand whether to do it or whether not to do it. Yeah. One, you should never really pay off a credit card completely. Sounds crazy, right? If you go six months with no activity, what happens to your credit? It goes down. Disappears. Yeah. You're starting all over again. Now, when I say six months with no activity, I mean six months of zero utilization, zero revolving credit. Your, your credit cards will stay open, so that won't affect you. But if you have no credit cards mm -hmm. and you've got nothing going on in your credit, you say, oh, I'm just going to use cash for everything, you're starting all over again. And yeah. when you start all over again and try to apply for something, you're going to be treated as a first-time buyer, yeah. which is going to require more money down. So you've got to keep credit open. The other thing about paying off a credit card is if you have bad credit, and now you finally made the disciplined choice to fix your credit and say, okay, well, now I'm going to just pay it off. Pay off that bad credit card, that, that credit card with bad credit and yeah. see what happens. Yeah. They're going to close that account so fast without you knowing. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be looking at the credit card, trying to swipe it again. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, Mr. Jones, we already closed that account. And you I just paid it off. Yeah, but six months ago, you was you was late every month. Yeah, so they want to get rid of you. So The moment they got, the moment, moment you squared got, up, you're out. You're out. Yeah. Done. And yeah. then once that credit card closes, what happens to your credit? Yeah. Drops. Well, and I think that's the thing that people don't realize is like, is that you have to, it's stuff that you don't even know. Like, sadly, I don't, I don't know anything about credit, right? I somehow have an 800 credit score. Have no idea how I did it. <laughs> have no idea. Mm-hmm. But I feel like more of an adult when I was told that. I was like, whoa, okay. Cool. I walked around a little different that right, day. Right, right. Shoulders I'm, back. Shoulders back, right? Because you think that like what's – you don't – I don't – you if you don't go into it, right? And But I'm all about like that's not my expertise. Like if I have a credit question, I call you, right? Right. Like I don't even try to give credit advice because I have no idea what I'm talking about, right? You have something about a house, call me, right? right. You have something about like podcast media, call me, right? Maybe mountain biking now because I'm into that. But uh, other than that, right. I don't know. If you want to ask them how to play the drum, I'm to call an Adrian. Right. I have no idea. But that's the thing is that we don't teach kids this. And then we like you listen to your parents or your blah, 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 your cousin, and they don't know what they're talking about. And then you're co-signing on this and co-signing on that. And next thing you know, it's and it's hard to get back. And it's sad sometimes when people are like, hey, I want to buy a house. And we send them over to Taylor, or Modern Lending, you know, name drop. And like, <laughs> he's like, dude, they can't do it. Like their debt to income ratio is out of control. Out of control. They're sixty-seven percent debt to income ratio. Their credit's five eighty or five fifty. They're gonna have to get their credit up. They're gonna have to pay stuff off, but they don't have the money to do it. And then it's just like then you go and rent, and you don't ever have, have a job to actually build up real wealth. And then you don't live in off your house in equity. And then it's this dirty cycle. Dirty cycle. It's a dirty, and that's I don't think. <clears throat> I definitely think there's major issues in the United States, but I think the biggest problem is economic problem than anything else. 
I think economic issues get people into bad situations, do bad things like steal and rob and sell drugs and whatever. And right. so, and then it's a dirty cycle because then they get arrested. Then you have a record. Then no one will hire you. Then this, and then you, and then you go back on the street, and then you go back to that again because yeah. it's survival mode. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of where saving a legacy comes in is mm-hmm. because without the education of wealth building, right? It really starts with budgeting. Mm-hmm. So plug right here. This is my, my minute. Um, <laughs> Go for it. it. It starts with budgeting. You've got to have the discipline to eliminate the Starbucks if you can't afford it. You've mm-hmm. got to have the discipline to eliminate the shoes, right, and the Jordans and, and the fresh clothes. And it starts with that. So if you don't have the discipline, then that's where we're going to start with saving a legacy. We're, we're going to sit down. We're going to eliminate all of that stuff. And then we're going to educate you on credit. We're going to take a look at your credit report, and we're going to find out where you can improve, what is going to be the necessary steps to get you up to a higher credit score. Because at the end of the day, what are we using credit for? To finance something, right? To get approved for a house, a car. And the last thing we want is for you to pay double the amount of interest that you don't need to pay Mm -hmm. just because of your ignorance. Mm -hmm. And it's not your fault that you're ignorant because, unfortunately— lack of knowledge. Our school system doesn't yeah. prep us for that. They don't teach us credit. They don't teach us taxes. You got to go out and you either yeah, hire someone. Self-education or, or hire someone. Or hire someone. Yeah. So, um, and that's where that came in. And then when you talk about wealth, I plugged my brother in. So my brother, he's a mortgage specialist, right? And if you talk about uh, the two ways, the two most significant ways to build generational wealth, mortgage, well, not mortgage, real but real estate yeah. and life insurance. Yep. So with the extra time that I had, I've always said I wanted to get into that field. And that's where I picked up in that area. Mm-hmm. So now we do budgeting. We do credit education, not credit repair, because credit repair messes up your credit. Mm-hmm. It You will get denied with credit repair. We do life insurance. And my brother now being, um, added, being added to the team, mortgage. So mm-hmm. we'll get you your real estate needs, your life insurance, and then everything that you need in order to be able to achieve those things. Yeah. Right. And that's where saving a legacy is. At. That's why we're educating our community on those things so they don't get stuck in that cycle mm-hmm. of, okay, well, I can't buy a house and then I've got to pay double the amount of rent than I would for a mortgage anyway. Right. Average rent out here in, in Marino Valley, Riverside is what? 2000 Yeah. Roughly, right? Mm-hmm. My mortgage is one thousand yeah. dollars, and that's the thing I don't think people realize. They never set themselves in a position to be able to take advantage of when things dip, right? That's like all. If it, anyone out there, like that's all I would say. Any smart people are doing right now. Yeah, they're just preparing because they assume that this is going to go a little bit sideways next year. And they're just preparing. And Do you when think th- January will? No, I don't think January. I think whenever this pandemic lifts. So I'll go into my real estate rant for go a ahead, second. Go ahead. So I, everyone always asks me, "Does the market going to tank?" I say, "No." And here's the reason why. And actually, it's crazy. It's funny, like you say, like educate, like like I watch YouTube. I don't have TV at my house. All mm-hmm. I have is YouTube, right? They try to sell me on Dish Network every month. I say no. But like last night, I'm like, do I watch this video or this economics guy talking about the future of California that's 30 minutes long? I'm gonna watch the economics video because I wanna know what he has to say. And and it's funny because when you you listen to other smart people and you're like, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're on the same plate, right? And the thing is, is that most people who lost their job were making less than $35,000 a year, okay? Right. So people who make $35,000 a year, you don't own houses, right? Those people are back on their rent, right? Or those are the people who live in houses that their parents own, but you live with them, you're 25, you help pay their mortgage, it's two family in one houses, and now they can't pay their mortgage, right? So right now there's a 3.8% delinquency in Riverside County and San Bernardino County. Those, it's down from 4.4. So we're starting to see a trend down. The moment the banks, the moment that those, 
foreclosures can start happening whenever California lifts the ban of foreclosures and evictions. Mm -hmm. There's not gonna be massive foreclosures because anyone who's owned a house anytime since 2010 has equity. Right. Unless you did a refi cash pull out and now you're upside down in it, which that will be a few people, but not not tons. Right. And so those houses will slowly drip onto the market. And so we're not gonna see the massive amount of supply like we did in 2008, nine and 10. I mean, right now we have like 400 houses on the Riverside. Back then we had 4,000, right? Wow. So that's such a massive amount of difference. So we're not gonna see a massive amount of prices slamming to the ground because one, banks have less things on the books, so they're not gonna be giving everything away. Mm -hmm. Two, they can't just foreclose on people. It's a longer process than, than it used to be because of some of the laws they made. And three, people have equity. They're not gonna, unless you're stupid and you just wanna put your head in the sand and before you know it, there's a knock on your door and they're, the sheriff's kicking you out, you're gonna sell and make some money, Right. right? And it sucks, I tell people this all the time. If you don't have a job right now and you don't see a job coming up, throw your house in the market now, sell it, take your $100,000 of equity, go rent for a year, get a job back, and the market will slow out because there are gonna be more houses hitting the market, rates are even lower, you can go buy another house. Like, When it makes sense. When it makes sense. Yeah. And a, a home is not an <laughs> asset unless you treat it as an asset. It's a liability. So when people go, oh, owning a house is an asset, when any realtor argues with me and I go, here we go. An asset makes you money. That, that house does not become an asset until the day you sell it. Until you sell it. So if you're not selling that house, it is a liability until you sell that house. And everyone goes, ooh, price is going up. Tell everyone who owned a house in 2005 and it shit out on them and it lost everything. Let's not forget, that could happen again. I don't think rates are gonna go up because banks need cheap money. Right. Rates will all, we're, the US is, unless, a, and a president will never blow up the economy. If, in a, if they're printing so much money, we need cheap money. Unless an, a president, which we'll never do because he'll never get reelected, if he ever, or the Fed or whatever, will never throw rates up to like seven. Right. Because it would crush the economy. Right. And we would go through a massive depression and that would never happen. So yeah, so I mean, we're we're not looking at nineties, early nineties interest no. rates. No, we we'll, I think the most we'll ever see is three and a half. Like because we are living that's what's keeping the economy going right now right. is cheap money. We are addicted to cheap money. It makes sense. A hundred percent. But yeah. here's the thing, we print it, so what does it really matter? <laughs> I mean seriously. <laughs> like I mean really it's just paper. Right. A, a house is whatever a money money is whatever we wanted it. This this, this suit, this shirt, this stuff, that anything. If all of a sudden we're like, hey, we're gonna start, coffee cups are gonna be our new currency. Okay, what's that coffee cup worth to you? And then you just start bartering coffee cups. Right. Just like when we went from gold to cash. And then after we stopped backing the dollar with gold, then kind of that's when things got messed up and we started yeah. printing the crap out of it. And I think that's where the, the saving a legacy is educating on, on, on all of that. For sure. They need to know. Because because it's not your job to know. That's not, this, what people need to realize is that what is with finances that people wanna do it on their own. But if you're, if you feel somewhat sick, you run to the ER. I, this is something I don't process it. They, I, I don't know if they don't trust financial people. I yep. know realtors, I know people don't trust real estate agents because most of us are scumbags, which I agree with you and they're shitty, 100%. I don't trust any of them either. But it's like, you're sick, you go to the doctor. You don't, you don't go on WebMD, you're not doing some special things at home, you're not asking anyone like, hey, you know, whatever, whatever. It's not, especially now you get a cough, you're running to stand in line for an hour and a half to get a freaking thing shoved up your nose, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But then finances, it's always your best friend's cousin that you're listening to that has a 400 credit score anyways. Talk Why? And I don't, let me ask you this question because you work with a lot of people. I think it's embarrassment. I think that they are embarrassed. Mm -hmm. People don't want to know how much I have. If the amount of people that need to realize your friends are also broke and might be also have shitty credit, it's okay, right? Like it's okay because they probably have shit credit too. Right. The average person doesn't have more than $500 in the bank. So if you're average and you're, all your friends are average, then you're like, oh, we're probably in the same boat. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the biggest challenges of saving a legacy when it comes to the budgeting and credit. Oh, for sure. Portion, right. Usually when you start a business, the first place you start a business is with personal family and friends. Mm -hmm. And they know it. Like I have one friend um, who was asking to borrow money. 
And I said, okay, I'll let you borrow some money if you get in my program. Mm -hmm. Now I'm good. Yeah, no, man. I'm good. And it's just because you don't want me to know yeah. where your money's at, For sure. how you're spending it, 100%. because you're, you're, you're not, blowing it. You're blowing it. Yeah. Right? You messed up your credit with stupid purchases mm -hmm. right like dumb stuff like now you're now you're getting hit up with uh you know and you're delinquent right and then you're getting collection calls and now you're getting oh, on, on, like your cell phone yeah that's probably the number one thing that has messed people's credit up cell phone cell phone yeah you don't apply for credit you just give it you they, yeah, they give, give you, you, you the credit and the moment you decide not to pay that bill you you tell sprint F you, yeah. I'm going to go to T-Mobile. Sprint says, okay, cool. We're taking new collections. Now, you got a $300 collections bill mm -hmm. that prevents you from buying a car, prevents you from buying a house. $300. One time, my brother forgot to turn back in the Dish Network box. This is why, oh, I, don't, yeah. this is why I don't want cable. Yeah. They called me, and they're like, hey, this is collections. I'm like, for what? They're like, you owe a Dish Network 200 bucks. Why? You never turned the box in. I said, they're like, you can pay us. I'm like, nope. Hung up the phone. I called Gar my brother Garrett. I'm like... You never moved, sent that box in. He's like, it's in the back of my truck. Dude, they just hit me with collections. Like, you better go return that thing. It's cause then, so then I called Dish. I'm like, hey, listen. Like, they're like, no worries. If you send it in, it'll go away. Right. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. And see, and, and, and that's where education comes in. So, like, I'm 99% positive. When they called you, that was an internal collections department. Oh, 100%. Only Dish. Yeah. Which means it wasn't reported to the credit 100%. bureau. 100%. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, you they're, they're, if you tell them, F you, mm -hmm. you're not getting this goddamn box, yeah. they're going to say, okay, close the account, yeah. and then they're going to send it to a collections mm -hmm. agency. Then once that goes to a collections agency, now you're going to see that $300 box or that $200 box pop up. Yeah, for sure. I have, I have a buddy that runs a collection company. Oh, yeah. So, and they just like, he's like, I buy debt so cheap, and then we just bang on phones. And he's like, if I can get you just pay a little bit. This is the commission. He's like, I just need you to pay. He's like, I'm paying pennies on the dollar on your debt. So if you pay anything, yeah. I make money. Yeah. He's like, I, so he's like, that's why they always go, well, you can pay us right now and you can pay us half. Yeah. It's like, well, hold on. Like, let me figure out what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to be, see, man, that's why just credit, credit education is so important. The credit repair man is going to dispute every single thing on your credit. Mm-hmm. And then when you go and apply, and this is what I tell all my friends and family that ask about saving a legacy, and you could plug this for one minute. <laughs> if, if you go to the you credit- You know, you could have done this like months ago. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> You know, all good, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm available, bro. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. I'm available. I'm just saying, bro. I've been playing DM and you. Right. <laughs> I'm more, I'm rocking one love. I can't even get hey, Justin you know in what? here. I can't even get Justin in here. We're gonna get him in here, that, man. That dude, I don't even want to say a bad word right now, but I have hit him up. I'm like, I, I've spent more money in that company than anyone else for sure. I've spent thousands. You, you, I, I might be a close second. For sure, I might, but I think you got me on that. Yeah. First of all, we need to we need to plug King High. Oh, right. Isn't it crazy, dude? Sorry, sorry. We'll go back to yeah, isn't yeah. it crazy? Like seriously, in in a high school. N now it's funny how like you you separate out, and then now you like everyone's in their early thirties, and you're like, okay, I see that guy doing that. Right. I see him doing that. Okay, how do I network network with that person? How do I how do I connect with that person? Why do you think I opened this thing, dude? How can I help people when they don't need to be buying and selling houses? No one, not a lot of people can do this. No people don't want to have a media guy, right? Right. But how can I help you? And that's the thing that people don't realize. You just got to help people. But like you look at King and you're like, okay, that dude's doing something. That guy's doing something. How can I help him? How can I help that guy? And that's how you go around the room. Like just, I remember Justin, I did something for him, like for I don't know, some media thing or whatever. He's like, I'm like, bro, I need nothing from you. So you know, I actually want to do it for you. Right. You know what I mean? So go on your rant about your. Oh yeah, so the the, the credit repair man, you, you got to stay away from the credit repair man because what they're going to do is they're going to dispute everything on your credit. Mm -hmm. And I say it's no different than imagine borrowing money from your best friend, and you borrow a hundred dollars from your best friend, and then you've got another friend that comes in and says, dispute, dispute, dispute. I'm going to dispute twenty dollars five times. Are you going to? Let that same par person borrow money? No. Hell no, you're not. You disputed the $100 that I gave you. Why would I let you do that? Yeah. Because that's all they're doing. That's all a credit repair person is doing. 
first of all, you're paying them two, three hundred dollars or whatever to dispute some. If it's a legitimate dispute, cool. Let it be a legitimate dispute. Somebody stole your social security, yeah. applied for a washer or dryer or whatever. Dispute it. That's real. But you don't need to pay someone three hundred dollars to do that. Go yeah. to Experian.com, figure out how to do it yourself because it gives you the FAQs right there. Mm-hmm. But I, I've had so many people that would try to come in buy a car, and I would just see just dispute on. Like, boo, you can't dispute your seven hundred dollar T Mobile bill. Yeah. Like You're using it. You 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 ran that up. <laughs> yeah. You let the bill go three, four months, and now you're gonna try to dispute that because it pops up on your collections? No. Well and the worst part about it, then you're getting hit with late fees. Yeah. Then you're hitting hate with high interest rates. Then you get like there's nothing more. I have I've had a Discover card forever and the interest rate's not that great and I like I like it's like has some auto stuff on there. Mm-hmm. And when I don't when I forget to pay it and I just cuz I always have the minimum on and I get hit with the, just the minimum. I'm like god dang it. I'm paying interest <laughs> on 150 bucks yeah. for no reason. Yeah. I got the money. Yeah. Just put put it down, pay it down 10 bucks. Yeah. I'm like what am I doing, yeah. right? I get so pissed at myself, you know. Yeah. But the problem is then you start getting, you know, back behind. And I really think it's a spending problem. I think most people just can't budget. And that's the discipline part you know when I mean? it comes to budgeting. If, if you don't have the budget and the discipline, it's going to spiral out of control. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when I was little and I would get $100 for my birthday. And it, it stuck with me because my mom and my dad were like, don't spend it all. Mm-hmm. It's going to go fast. Yeah, it goes so fast. And you're like, 100 bucks? Yeah. This is a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. And 95, eight years old? Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah, you're rolling. You're right. You're yeah. balling out of control. You're going to then, Target and crushing. Or the ice command rolling up on you, right. and you're buying half the See, freaking car. And at that time, that was when Super Nintendo was popping. Oh. Right? You're so getting it was games? Like, yeah. Man, I'm going into Best Buy. Yeah. I'm going to get this. And those games were twenty nine ninety nine. dollars mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and buy three games. Yeah, why not? Right. Get my change, and I'm oh, mama, I'm gonna go buy another game. You ain't got no more, boo. Mm-hmm. You ain't got no more money, mm-hmm. right? That hundred dollars goes fast, and if people don't have the discipline to understand how fast money goes, well, I don't think people realize how much now, like a thousand dollars goes. Right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk real talk for that. Like, when I remember my first year in real estate. Like, I made. I went from making nineteen grand a year for ten years in baseball. To then I'm like, I made 20 G's this week. So I was just freaking balling out, balling yeah. out, right? I'm like, I'm making six figures, like balling out, buying stuff, going out every night, buying people dinner, mm-hmm. suits, blah, blah, blah. And then next year rolls around, tax season comes up. I'm like, I don't even got enough money to pay my taxes. Like, I'm like, what? How did I spend? What happened? Yeah. Now, like I tell you all the time, I'm like, five, like, I think a lot of people have to realize, like, I tell myself every day I'm poor. I tell myself every day I'm poor. Like, yesterday, my mom said, I was up thinking my mom said, I'm like, mom, I'm just living paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> I'm barely making it. I am poor. I'm living check to check. And my mom's like, why do you say that? I'm like, because if I think I'm poor, I'm going to show up every day. That $100 is still worth $100. I'm not going to be like, oh, what's 5Gs? Like, wow, you know, whatever. No, $100 is still $100. Right. It's like, Adrian, I gave you 20 bucks. You bought a two dollar coffee. Put my eighteen bucks on the counter. If I'm missing eighteen dollars, I'm, gonna have, a, uh, I'm gonna have a talk. Yeah, because <laughs> that twenty bucks is not my lunch, and now I've gone almost whole day and only spent twenty bucks. You know, and that's what I think when people think I can just make more money. You can't make more money. You always spend it. Right. I used to be the same way. Oh, if I could just make another fifty G's a year, I'll be straight. I'll be so cool. I'll just make you fifty just more. more money. You just spend it. Yeah. You just spend more money because. You just do, it's natural. So you have to be like, okay, I'm not going to, right? Like, I'm. you know Roy, he's Justin's friend. No. Uh, so Roy's like a, whatever. So Roy's a buddy of mine, he's fr- good friends with Justin, I met him in. And I, Roy, it's like this, and I tell him like, bro, I don't wear, I don't buy Easy's, bro. I said, I'm wearing seven, $40 shoes from Nordstrom's rack mm-hmm. that I've had for three years. Like, my outfit is not even worth as much as your shoes. I was like, so you wonder why I can pay for all this stuff? Because I'm rocking, I'm rocking sw- the same pair of jeans. I have one pair of jeans, bro. Right. And I'm wearing seven dollar <laughs> t-shirts. Right. And the most expensive thing on me is my hat. Right. Which I have no problem rocking. But like, I'm like, I don't have watches. I don't need them. Like, and that's the thing. You get start eating up, and then why do you do it? Is it, is it image? Is it confidence? Is it right? 
you know? Yeah, all, I, all I, of those I things. Think, I think it's image. I think it's comedy. It's trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's, you know, and they don't, and they don't ever think they can become free. And they never will know what financial freedom is. Yeah. I still don't know what financial freedom is yet. I'm yeah, still I'm still shooting for that. Yeah, And people absolutely. are like, what do you mean? How do you not? I'm like, I want to be able to like say, if I want to stop working for a year, be like, I'm out. That's financial freedom. See you, boys. Right. And have things making me money while I'm not working. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the goal. You know, that's that's kind of a, a, a plug to to my, um, my buddy from college, Todd. Todd Billionaire. His real name is Charles. He teaches on trade options. Um, I mean, the man is literally an options genius, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and he's got a huge community that he puts uh, together that educates the black and brown community mm -hmm. on how to build wealth. Like, yeah. you know, and I've, I've done some affiliate marketing with him, you know, just because I just believe in that type of stuff. It's like, get your budget together, get your credit together, manage your money, have discipline, and then figure out a way to, you know, obviously keep working. But if there's, if you have that flexibility, get some passive income. Yeah. Get some passive income and start letting your money make money, you mm -hmm. know? So shout out to him, man. He's, he's doing real well, man. Real proud of him. Went to college together, hey, Cal boy. State, San Bernardino. So, hey, boy. Um, but yeah, man, um, saving the legacy. The last part about it really is that, <clears throat> The life insurance. Mm -hmm. The life insurance has really kind of blown up and really taken off. Got a uh, license with the state in uh, March. So I'm not even a full year doing this. I don't do the overcomplicated um, IULs. I don't do the overcomplicated universal. I'm not a financial advisor. Yeah. I'm not a certified financial advisor. I can advise you on how to budget and how to get your credit together, but I'm not going to be the person to look at a bunch of charts and and you know all that complicated mm -hmm. stuff let's keep it simple let's get you some people life. don't need that they don't they really don't they really don't they don't just get you some basic life insurance everybody needs life insurance get you some basic whether depending on your age let's get you some term life insurance that's going to cover you make sure that you can transfer it to a whole life policy as you get older and depending on your age if you're older let's get you a whole life policy Simple. We don't need to overcomplicate it. Let's find out what your budget is. Let's find out what your needs, your wants, and your budget is. If we get you something within your budget, you need to sign up. Yeah. And I'm the same way as you. I'm not going to chase you. Yeah. If you don't see the value. Then what's the point? In saving a legacy for your family. Yeah. You leave your family with the burden of... Final expenses. Oh, for sure. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and and you're you, the you're the person that's putting your kids on the corner with a sign, right. going to a car wash to right. just be able with, to afford to to cremate you and, and GoFundMe's. Yeah, and GoFundMe's. And you don't get to grieve properly. You no. you leave your family to grieve while trying to raise money via GoFundMe. Yeah, I think that's you don't a, do your family like that. No, and that's what I don't think people like. One of my really good buddies is a, a trust lawyer. And we've had this, and he's like, dude, everyone needs a trust. And I try to tell people, listen, my grandfather died last year. He had a trust. I deal with clients. I had one. We just closed in on Friday. Last Friday, she we, sold, we put her house on the market in L.A. She died in escrow. No trust, no will, and it was a reverse mortgage. Thank God we were able to, like, get into the courts, get everything going. Like, I even told people, I'm like, they're going to lose that house and all the equity that she has in it because there's, no one can make a decision. And what people don't realize, it's like not taking the proper steps to have a trust. I'm 20, I'm 33 years old. I have a trust. If something happens to me today, everyone knows where it's going. Everything goes. Yep. There's no, you make no decisions. There's no, like you can get into all my accounts. They're all listed out, everything. All the equipment in this room goes to someone, right? Adrian, he's, he's all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, my assistant gets paid for two months after I die. Right, because I'm not gonna just leave her high and dry. Right, payroll company knows if something happens to me that she gets paid out. And what people, and then it's like, then like my grandpa died. It was like everything was lined out. He had plenty of money, right? He, you know, roughly probably had a million dollars when he passed away. I had no problem paying for the. It wasn't like searching around for the funeral home. Right. It was like that's like we'll just go with that one. That's what, like that's an expensive one. I don't. What does it matter? I I don't want to spend the next five days interviewing homes to save a thousand dollars like i don't talk care about integral selling you want to know the people that take advantage of you 
It's those people that the cheap people. Well, n- the funeral home. Oh, for sure. You're emotional. A hundred percent. You're 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 not thinking you're right. You're not thinking right, mm-hmm. and it's you know you want to give your grandpa the best funeral yeah. possible. Right. I know this is only a ten thousand dollar casket, but he he would probably like to go. I went trim, to Costco. Huh? See, Costco, bro. Why do you think I was <laughs> the guy? That, dude, Costco's the cheapest. Nicest caskets, Costco, so, on or online. You know, shout and, out to Costco. And and you don't want to be dealing with the emotional mm-hmm. distress and an emotional sale for sure. You know, so, I, ne- I make no decisions on emotion. Exactly, even dating. Good. I will not date a girl if she doesn't make seventy five grand a year. To each its own, bro. To each its. That's the truth. You know what? I we, we we could get into into the relationship podcast. You that's know, the truth. You know, why? I had a list, bro. <laughs> I have a list, and that's one of them. And people go, "Why?" And I go, "Because you know, two reasons. One, if you make fifty grand or less, you're not even barely surviving. Right. So the moment I date you, I'm taking on a liability. A mo- the moment we start dating, she's an expense. She's an expense. True. Right. She can't even cover herself. And I'm I'm 33, so she'll probably if she's 22 or 24, whatever, right? But if you're you gonna my, give her time to of keep course, making money, yeah, yeah, of course. But then if she's if going she in the right it? direction, then I break up with her. <laughs> okay. So then now you're 10 years in. She's 33 and she still hasn't made seven. Then I then it was a mistake myself. I bought I didn't date a girl that was uh, motivated to go in the right direction, and I would let her know like this is the goal. So you got to get there. So going back to it. So then you can barely probably make your car payment. Right. You're not financially secure in any way. You can't save any money. You, If anything goes wrong, you don't have the money to pay for it yourself. So then you have to pay it. You go on any trips, you're paying for it. Right? So it's like, what do you bring to the table? You're hot? Cool. What else? And that's my problem is I'm always like, what What else? Same, like, we're the same person. Okay, I got this going on. I, I, I'm helping educating people on uh, credit. What else could we be talking about? Okay, mortgages, cool. What else can I get? Life insurance. Okay, what's the next? That's what people don't think. What else? Right. I'm always thinking, what else? So it's like, cool, you're hot. What else do you bring to the table? You'll always be successful, Adam. I'll tell you that much. That's why we're homies. <laughs> You'll right? always be successful. So, that's the th- so then when people laugh at me, I'm like, I'm like, and then... People don't understand, like, you gotta work. And if your significant other doesn't understand work ethic and saving and being responsible, and no, right now we shouldn't go buy a new freaking car, or no, you can't just go max out a credit card because you wanna go shopping for the day when you're not even making enough money to spend. Listen, if you're making six figures, that's your money. Hey, do your thing. Do your thing, girl. But when the rent's due, you better be, halves better be coming my way. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I, I wouldn't necessarily put a cap no. or a minimum on income because dual income is very powerful. I need dual income really bad. It that is very powerful. I get, any nurses out there, I need I need decent income and insurance because that would be perfect. Yeah, health insurance? Yeah, because yeah. I have to pay my own. Yeah. I'm my oh, own yeah. employer. Yeah, you're, it's pretty expensive that I'm way. I'm 500 a month. I'm healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Right. Yeah. So, and I never use it. the 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 dual income is powerful. So mm-hmm. even if you know, a hundred thousand, even if they're making one thirty, if you're budgeting your money correct, for sure, there's still an opportunity for it to work, Adam. Because I think, then, I think there's a wife out there for you, man, <laughs> and she may not be making seventy five. Well, because then you can grow wealth. Because right now I'm self efficient, right? Mm-hmm. I pay all my bills. I save money, blah, blah, blah. Cool. If you come in with any money, it's cherry money. True. It's cherry money. If she, That's, so if she moves in with you. Yeah, it's cherry money. I'm already paying the rent myself. Right. I don't need you. You're just a cherry on top. Cool. So then, but then if you believe in the same, well, okay, cool. We'll take your 75 straight investments. That's not fun money. That's not you to now go, you know, get your, get all dolled up, buy some Gucci. No, sorry, homie. We're, we don't do we're not doing that. We ain't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one vacation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you know, we'll stay at a, Air, a Motel 6 somewhere. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we'll go to Vegas. We'll stay off the strip. Right, stay off the strip. And do the cheap buffets. You know, right? See. And we need the free shows at the at the right. Treasure Island. Yeah. We don't need to go into the nice ones. Treasure Island does a nice show outside. Hilarious. I'm totally joking on that one. But no, because then it's like, cool. So then that can grow wealth. Because, and then it's like, okay, like, my grandpa will kill me. When I get to heaven, he'll punch me in the face if I did not play the game right. Because he played the game pretty decently. Say, you know, lived, you know, didn't have really, never had a crazy job, 
right? Had a million dollars in the bank when he passed away, right? And he even says, he's like, I wish I would have played the game more aggressively. I would have probably been better off. You know what I mean? He just was always scared of losing it. He, so he's more scared. He was more scared to lose than win. Right. So, but yeah, man. But when you've got that dual income, yeah, you can play a little you more. You can play less. more. He didn't. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was he was single for most of his life. So, so yeah. that's why I want the dual income because then that's like, okay, let's invest that money. Yeah. Let's go buy some stuff. A hundred percent of that can yeah. be invested. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm self-efficient. Yeah. So whatever you bring to the table that's just is cherry. growing money. Growing. So then uh, we're, you know, say 35. At 55, we're done. And we can do whatever we now want. Now let's go on the vacation. Now let's go as much fun. Let's go enjoy life. I just don't ever want to be that person who's 65 years old still have to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're still just like living check to check. Yeah. Like, you know, it's crazy. Yep. That's it's, that's the difference, man. And that's what, you know, that, that education, that, that building wealth is important. You know, and if you don't even have the sense of where to start. Mm-hmm. You're never going to get there. Well, and I think too many people think it's such an uphill battle. And it's just like, dude, you just kind of piece, pull it and pull it and pull it. Slowly. Pull it. Slowly but surely. Slowly. You it's, know, your credit's not going to get better overnight. You're not going to drop $5,000 in your savings account overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, this stuff takes work. Yeah. It takes discipline. I always say credit and budgeting is the same mentality that it takes to working out. Mm -hmm. You can't go work out. And then as soon as you're at the gym and you're, you're and, jacked. you know, you're yeah. looking, you're like, oh, my God, you know, look at the arms. Yeah. And, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. You probably won't see results for at least a month. Yeah. Maybe longer. And, that, and that's what I always have to struggle when I, like, follow, like, older guys, you know. I'm like, dang, they're so, they have it. And I'm like, but, dude, he's 60. Yeah. Like, you're 30. Yeah. Like, he's Chill. 60. Take your time. Yeah. You like, know? I have to remind myself all the time. Yeah. Like, dude, he's been doing that for 50 years or yeah. whatever. And, and, and it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of growth. It takes a lot of patience yeah. to get to that point. You know, and that's really one of the foundations of just people understanding, look, let's let's start with your budget. Let's fix your credit. Okay. And then, you know, the, the, the bonuses of that are the products yeah. of whether you need a mortgage or not. Mm -hmm. My brother is going to help you with that. Um, and then if you need life insurance. I'd say 99% of the people that I sell to when it comes to life insurance are typically entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right. We live in a day today where you've got more entrepreneurs than ever before. Right? Of course. And that's because our job is our phone. Yeah. Right. You know, you can operate a whole business. For sure. Like I can, I can give 10 quotes in 10 minutes mm -hmm. all from my phone. Yeah. You know, so it, it gives us that flexibility, but it also increases the demand for that. Well, so. exactly. So, you know, obviously we'll wrap this up right here, but like, where do you feel like to kind of leave on a note where you kind of made the mindset of switching, leaving, was it scared to leave enterprise and being the number one salesperson to kind of go down this journey of leaning towards this? And obviously you still work for Carfax, but obviously I'm assuming that's going to be coming to an end sooner or later whenever this takes off was that a scary moment for you and what was the the moment in time where you're like i gotta do this yeah um i, I think it it was something that i'm i was always pushed to do mm -hmm. because i was always the person trying to help mm -hmm. always trying to help. and then that's when people were like my cousins family members friends are like dude you need to be getting paid for this yeah, like, right like you dropping gems like this stuff you're talking about, people don't know. Mm -hmm. People will pay you for this information. And I, you know, and I was just kind of thinking like, it's really just a passion of mine. Like you could not pay me, but my time is money mm -hmm. at the same time. And I value my time. So therefore you're going to compensate for that, for sure. you know? Um, but it, it was just, it was just one of those nights, you know, 3 a.m. and I was just like, saving a legacy mm -hmm. that's that's really what i want and i think that name in itself embodies everything of what i want to accomplish saving okay well the average person doesn't have more than a thousand dollars in their savings account why because they don't have the budget and the discipline saving legacy right i'm i grew up in a home in a, in a christian-based home grew up in church right down the street here life church of god in christ about five minutes from here you know, right off of Rubido. And 
one of the things is talking about leaving an inheritance for your children and your children's children. But we don't have the education to do that. So all of those things really kind of, it just clicked one day. I can't tell you what day it did, you know, and all of those experiences with the guy who had all this money in in his savings for a down payment but left his credit maxed out, you know, all of those things. And then eventually when I finally just made the time for people to do that, it's just kind of taken off, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I've, I've been blessed. You know, I think the, the biggest focus right now, obviously, with COVID-19 is, is life insurance. Um, typically around tax time, we put more emphasis on budgeting and credit because there's an opportunity yeah. for you to get your little refund and don't go crazy because mm-hmm. you've got something in place or there's an opportunity for you. Isn't to it sad some track. people treat their taxes as like a savings account? Like they're like, oh, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get five G's back at oh, tax yeah. time. Yeah, they go crazy on uh, Christmas because yeah. they think, ah, oh, two months I'll get it back. Yeah, it's the most ignorant thing. I can't stand it. Well, it's <laughs> funny is like when people go, I'm like, oh, I gotta file, I gotta do an extension. They're like, why? I'm like, when you pay, you're not, you're not rushing to file taxes. Trust right. me. When you gotta pay like twenty G's a year, like you ain't filing. Yeah. You're like, you know, like, can we just push this off? Yeah, like, let's take a time. Yeah. Let's, let's push this October. Yeah, and then and then I always tell my CPA, I'm like, I'm like, I want you to really focus on mine. So let's wait until after you're done doing right. everyone else's because I don't want you to make a mistake. Right. Then I want you to find every little thing. I need thing. write-offs. I need some write-offs. Right. I know, man, like uh, a serious note, like I just qualified for a house and I was like, didn't think I could. And people are like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I don't know how my taxes are filed like i'm just like write me give me write-offs like you know and then when i was actually able to qualify and then i actually had 800 credit 808 i was like you're good to go now taylor was like you're actually like a legit buyer dude i'm like i am he's like you're and you're an adult and i'm like huh (laughs) i guess i am sometimes so man it's a pleasure man absolutely i think that i think more people need to hear everything you're saying and i think that's something that i frustrate and you probably get a little frustrated with because of online we made the joke about people shaking their booty but it's like I, I've seen your gems and I feel like I dropped some gems and I'm like, dude, more people because it's so easy to get sucked into this in, in any in any financial get sucked into a scumbag. Yeah, that are there to make the quick dollar or they they're so dumb. They actually think they're helping you and they have no idea what they're yeah. talking about. I, I, I really have to say something in that regard. I think one of the biggest differences with saving a legacy, especially with the insurance product. Uh, you have to get contracted with these insurance providers. Mm-hmm. So I work with 20 plus insurance providers. Um, they all commission me different mm-hmm. at a different percentage. Yeah. Some are 75, 80, whatever. I don't care about that. Yeah. I'm getting you the lowest rate. Mm-hmm. When there's other companies pushing you, say, hey, we'll give you this higher commission just to try to compete for my consumer so that I send them those. Mm-hmm. I don't care about that. Yeah. My, my thing when it comes to integrity selling is not to be that scumbag. I'm not over here trying to recruit a bunch Massive of people team, yeah. to be I, my insurance. people hit me up to sell insurance. I'm like, bro, let me just focus on houses. Yeah, like, like, I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, what is he selling this week? He, no, next I, thing I, I'm selling knives. I, I'm not, yeah, I'm yeah. not that person. Mm-hmm. I, I want to be I known. actually hate selling. Yeah. <laughs> I actually don't like talking to people. See, and, and but that goes back to the customer referral. Yeah. When they reach out to you. That's that's all my game is. I hate, I hate bugging people. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And if you don't need my services, I don't want to really bug you. Yeah, plug that part. Plug, yeah, exactly. So, so um, but yeah, man, it's it's absolute pleasure, man. You know, I'm 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 really proud of you, dude. Seeing thanks, everything, you know, it was, it was one day I, I looked, I was like, man, he's. It's doing, funny when people come well. here and people come here like this is actually legit. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I'm, but it's funny going back. We were talking about like COVID, right? Like this was like a storage room, and then right when COVID hit, I couldn't show a house, so I was like super depressed. I was in here like. What am I gonna do, man? Like, what? Well, how do I keep? Like, what am I gonna do while I'm bored? Like, I can't show a house. And I looked around. I was like, podcast room done. And what people don't realize is like, so I just got told that I can't show houses. That means I can't make money. Right. I don't make. I don't have a salary. I don't make money unless I sell houses. But then I'm like, let's spend. Let's spend some money right now. Let's 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 make this. And then what's funny is everyone who sat at home 
now they're trying to ramp up and it's like dude you gotta sh- it's consistency yeah i told someone today i'm like anything you do is consistent saving money budgeting it's just having the discipline to show up every day that's the key to success it's discipline i think when i ever have kids if i ever do i'm literally gonna like pay them like you go to school you get minimum wage pay taxes right you want something you go buy it right i think i'm gonna teach everything financial you get in trouble think about why do we teach our kids by spankings but when you're an adult you get you get a speeding ticket you lose money why not teach kids the same thing you're in trouble okay you owe owe dad 15 bucks but dad i want to go buy that sorry you got in trouble you broke the rules you give me 15 bucks makes sense right pay your taxes pay your taxes right right? and then you just take your tax money throw it in some some ira or some roth or whatever for them them, right and before you know it you're saving money for your children a little bit at a time so when they're 50 they're gonna be like dude my parents built up something i didn't even do anything and then you know that's my goal that's my goal i want to be at the point where my kids you know have a house you know what i mean like a rental that they'll take over rental properties that they're going to take over one day for me move them into legacy yeah yeah Yeah, but you can do that because you're educated and you took the time to educate yourself well and that's the thing is i think work hard yeah i work my ass off and we educate ourselves every day we're on every day that's what people don't get you don't turn it on and off it's it's here it's when you have the mindset of like how can i help people what else so like I mean, like they, like us, like I was like, I saw her, I was like, dude, when are you going to roll through? Yeah. And it's like instant. And what people don't realize, it's like, dude, you have to be careful in these industries. And you're going to go to your mom's best friend's cousin who really don't know what they're talking about and you have no idea. And then you come, and then sometimes it's too late. You know, like you right. said, if you go to a credit repair company and they ding everyone and all of a sudden they come to you, you're like, dude, it's kind of too late, man. Like, yeah. You, and even though in the moment you think that's going to be the easiest, fastest way, it's almost like you're going to have to back up a little bit. You know what? That, yeah. It, there's no easy, fast way in anything. In anything. There's the, no easy, fast way. You well, that's like when rich. people went crazy on Bitcoin a while ago and everyone was buying Bitcoin like crazy. They thought they were going to become – and then the Bitcoin crashed. Crashed. And then half those people were buying Bitcoin on credit cards and then they couldn't pay their credit card bills and they lose it. There's no fast way to do this. Yeah. It's showing up every day. The problem is that people will see you now or see me now, and it's like, dude, you don't see every day. You don't see the long nights, you don't see the headaches, you don't see the stress, you don't see the financial, you don't see the everyone telling you no, right? Yeah. A lot of no's. Yeah. I get way, we get way more no's yeah. than anyone else. In, in, in this business, man, one of the philosophies is some will, some won't, so what, who's yeah. next? Hey, you move on to the next person. And that's always been the philosophy, and I learned that in car sales. Yeah. You know, and I, I I put that on a yellow sticky note right on my computer. Mm-hmm. And every time, it, you know, the whole philosophy was go out and get 20 no's. Yeah. That's just a sales game. Yeah. You know, that's just a part of. Well, that's what people don't, just, people don't realize is that you're paying for expertise. Right. That's what you're paying for. Yeah, cool. You can go get it cheaper from someone else. They're going to have, if, if they're going to have no idea what they're really doing. You're paying me for my expertise. That's why, why do you think the medical game is so expensive? You're paying for that guy to go to college for 12 years right. and pay off his school debt and to make a good living at 35 now. Yep. You know, so. Yep. That's yeah. what a lot of people don't understand. Like, I'm a musician too. Yeah. They're like, dude, why are you guys so expensive to come out and play for a birthday party? And it's only for an hour. You're not paying me just for that hour. No. <laughs> You're paying me for the 12 years. You learn how to play. That I learn how to pick up a song in less than two minutes. Yeah. All right. And for, then it's like driving out there. Right. Set up time. Equipment. Playing. All of that. Yeah. And then if something breaks, I got to pay for that. All of that. I got to tune my stuff. I got to pay for that. Then we got to throw everything in the car, drive there, set up, play for an hour. So that one hour it's more like a six hour day that you don't realize. Exactly, rehearsal time. Yeah, rehearsal time. Like, there's always more underneath that mm-hmm. you don't see. We just present to you the gold and the silver. Yeah, it's like when people are like, I, w- I would love to do open houses. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. And they're like, why is that? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's not just the three hours you're sitting there. It's an hour, and I was like, I put out a lot of signs. So it's an hour and a half setting up. Map the day before mapping them out. If I don't know the area that well, how do I want people to go to the house? Then it's showing up. Then it's setting up. Then it and then I go in and if no one shows up, you break it all down, Ugh. and you wasted eight hours in that day. And then you got to be like, I got to do this. I got to do it again. Yeah, pleasure, man. Always, man. And until next time. Yes, sir, man. Peace. <laughs>